whole object between Mudgy 70 was to take that kit and that lightest of all model airplane kits when it came to the Piper Cub, the clipped wing Piper Cub, and make it even lighter. That's part of the fantasy. The Mudgy Aircraft Company, makers of fine-tuned stole machines that you probably never heard of. This fun example of a Mudgy happens to be the 70th iteration of 77 total that have been built so far. Where did Mudgy get its start? What even is a Mudgy? And what's so unique about Mudgy 70? Let's take a closer look. Mudgy 70 started its life as a box of wood in the form of a SIG clip wing cub kit. She was masterfully built, along with all other Mudgies, by our good friend and mentor, Brian Connolly. This kit originally called for a 25 size nitro engine. However, she was electrified and flies off a roughly 450 size brushless outrunner that came from the old school fly zone beaver. Has micro servos all around and flies on a 3S 1300 milliamp lipo. Now, you'd probably think for a plane with a wingspan of 56 inches that it would fly in a bigger battery, say, maybe a 4S2200. So how is it that it's able to fly for nearly 10 minutes with such a small battery? Lightweight. The all-up flying weight of this bird is, wait for it, 35 ounces. Compare that to the all-up weight of 56 ounces with the similarly sized, popular 61-inch E-Flight Turbo Timber Evolution, and you'll see what we're getting at. Why is light so important? We'll dig deeper into the technical aspects of this topic in a future video, but in summary, it allows you to do so much more with a similar wing on a plane that weighs nearly half the weight of comparable models. It makes the plane floatier, allows it to come to a stop quicker, and keeps the plane from biting you as quick when you load up the wing as a heavier plane would. The name Mudgy exemplifies these tried and true flight characteristics while asking very little in return of its pilot, aside from some basic stick and rudder proficiency. Let's forward slip into some Mudgy flying demos as proof of concept of these benefits of low weight without needing to go on a diet. Backyard runway, no sweat. Mudgy 70 cam. I had a lot of fun at the end of the winter breaking in my new yard by throwing in a pack in a Mudgy 70 and taking to the skies. She had zero issues getting in and around the yard, departing and arriving over the fence, and I even had some fun hovering around the lawn as my dog smelled the dead and dormant grass. I also never got worried about running out of available runway and hitting the perimeter fencing either. She's light, so there's not much mass to bring to a stop, especially when the tires roll onto the high friction surface of the grass. I had my fair share of so-so landings and even a go-around as well throughout, but better to be safe than sorry, really. I even tried it approaching parallel to the fence on the back side of the yard behind the taller bushes. It's definitely a fun time. Fast forward to the spring now, and I've been finding more fun ways to prove this plane's abilities. Check out this approach coming between the trees that I tried, doing a 180 low to the ground and landing in my freshly mowed backyard runway. This one had me on my toes, but knowing Mudgy 70, I knew there wasn't concern over her biting me. It's time to stretch Mudgy 70's legs and take her to a more open space, the Southern New Hampshire Flying Eagles AMA-sanctioned RC field. There's fun to be had in a tight space at this plane, but also in an open space as well, in a long paved and grass runway as to the fun. Stick and rudder is a must with this plane, as Brian's testament to what makes a Mudgy proof. I really love practicing stuff with her, like one wheel touch and goes, and one wheel turns in the wet morning dew covered grass. The first time I ever saw someone do a one-wheel touch-and-go with an RC plane was Brian as he flew a Mudgy at our field as a kid, so it's only fitting for this plane to do the same in return. I also worked on some stick and rudder via wheel landings, three points, and even a knife edge. Don't forget tail up taxiing like full-scale bush pilots do on gravel bars to prevent damage to those tail wheels. It tends to lead to bystanders telling me that I should have bought an RC car, but it's fun stick and rudder work. Oh, and don't forget more Mudgy hovering. It should be noted that she has a true 2 to 1 power to weight with this motor, and will hover right around 50% throttle and punch out effortlessly. Yet she's a stole plane. Mudgy can. Now it's time for the true test of a Mudgy, taking her back country. We found this amazing park about 10 minutes north of us with a beautiful pond that has a grassy perimeter that screamed runways to us in all directions. I decided to start with the longest approach I could do to learn the area and warm up a bit. Mudgy 70 had no issues climbing above the trees and forward slipping down to land. Next up was just a tad shorter of an arrival space, but still had an obstacle to come over with the approach being over the water. Mudgy 70 had no issues doing a similar style of approach with a forward slip to land. Now that she had me feeling warmed up and in the bush flying state of mind, it was time to try some tighter approach paths and see what Mudgy 70 really could do. The first tighter approach was climbing over some tall deciduous trees, which allowed me to see through them, turn around, forward slip through the branches, and make a 90 degree left turn to final and land. 
It took a couple tries to get the timing of everything right and prevent a front flip on touchdown, but Mudgy 70 pulled through yet again. The final bush approach was the one that gave me the steepest overall angle of descent and the biggest difference in altitude from the top of the obstacle on final to the landing surface. Mud G70 had no issues with the approach yet again, which resulted in a successful touchdown after the turn to landing. Ultimately, really, what our friend and mentor Brian Connolly has done in creating the Mudgy line of airplanes is to inspire people like us and many others to fly outside the box, to prove to people that removing ribs and spars just to save weight really is a good idea, and to learn the importance of never settling for less. Hence, Brian having completed 77 Mudgies so far. He constantly learns from his past mistakes and improves them on the next model. Speaking of which, stay tuned for the completion of Mudgy 78, which was made after a spark of inspiration Brian gained when I introduced him to a very Mudgy-like RC model called the Savage Bobber. But no, it's not based on any of the recently released versions out there right now. Those are all too heavy for their own good. Rather, it's based on the OG Savage Bobber that is an incredibly lightweight model created directly by the full-scale Savage Bobber manufacturer in Europe and is nearly impossible to get in the United States. If you like this video, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and a click on that subscribe button, if you so desire. Happy landings and bounce one on for us. We'll see you next time with a new upload.